Mary Hudson. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. I think Pastor definitely has the cool factor, right? We're sending uh, Keith a video now, so he'll be impressed. We just want to say how thankful we are to be here at Living Word Family Church today. And you know, you think that uh, we're just visiting friends or visiting ministers, but actually God has purpose in everything he does. And the last time we were here, we were asking about uh, the people in the hallway that have been in here to minister. And, you know, we've had a heart for Asia and we saw the picture of Pastor Kong Hee and Pastor Steve connected us with Pastor Kong in Singapore. And we have been, we last uh, November, we went there, we went to Taiwan to his uh, sister church, Pastor Abraham, who is over 60 years old, but he also has the cool factor. And he has dark purple hair and he wears glasses with no lenses. But he's got 3,000 people and 75% of them are students and they're seriously into the Word of God. I mean, they study the Bible. After they have a service like that, they go out into the foyer, they sit in circles and they meditate and mutter and talk about what was just preached. I mean, they get it down deep. Amen. What did Yongi Cho used to say about the American church was that we did not digest what we just ate. Yeah. So they're taking spiritual enzymes with what they just ate. Awesome. <laughs> but we were really blessed to be there and um, our uh, Pastor Kong had us come up and prophesy in front of uh, one of his services, about 8,500 people. He has five or six services every weekend. Amazing. And he, he, uh, he said to me, Mary, we open up 77 churches around Asia to you. We want you to go and minister. But that was all because of Pastor Steve and Pastor Connie and this church, Living Word Family Church, opening the door to us. So we are very, very grateful for that. We couldn't go to China this time. We were supposed to go to China because the new... Um, uh, how do you say, prime minister, is not prime minister, but he's a, um, anyway, he's the head of China, premier, yeah, in fact, his name is XI, but it's Xi, and he had started last October to take all the crosses off the churches uh, south of Shanghai, and he said, Pastor Kong uh, rearranged our schedule, so we went into Indonesia instead. That was interesting, at 11 o'clock at night, landing in this little airport, but it was a, a wonderful service we had there. So um, that was all our missionary ventures in Asia are due to this church. So praise the Lord, amen. So we're blessed about that. We're going back. Um, We've had an open door, our friend Bob Harrison, the minister, the business minister, you've probably had him here, has open doors for us in Rio de Janeiro in September. So we're gonna go on uh, two largest churches there and hold meetings. So we're looking forward to that. And then next year, again, we will do Pastor Kong, amen? Good. So today, we're gonna talk to you about being a joyful Parents, no matter what you're going through or no matter what your children are doing, I'm honored to be part of the family series. And, um, you know, a, a joyful parent will equal, equal a happy home. And I just want to tell a little story first to get everybody in a light mood. I heard about there was this uh, minister that went out bear hunting and he searched and he searched all through the woods but he couldn't find one sign of a bear. And finally, in frustration, he threw his gun down. He went to the stream to cool off. And about that time, he saw this huge grizzly bear racing towards him. He fell on his knees and he said, oh God, please protect me. I am asking you to convert this bear into a Christian. And miraculously, the bear froze in its tracks, put up both paws towards heaven, and he said, thank you, Lord, for this food I'm about to receive. <laughs> that story reminds me of my mother. We used to nickname her Grizzly behind her back. She was so protective of her children that she uh, once... Uh, my brother went to Europe and she, he did not send his mother a postcard for three weeks. So she got very upset about that. She called her congressman and told him to uh, send out an agent to Rome at a last known address and find my brother. And finally this uh, agent knocks on the door 
of this hotel, the last known address, and he showed him his badge, and he wanted to see my brother Peter's passport to verify it was my brother, and uh, he looked down and he said, write your mother a postcard. <laughs> like I say, she was one brave woman, we called her Grizzly. She did not mess around. You know, when you have enthusiasm for life, life has enthusiasm for you. And Proverbs 15, 13 says, 15, 15 says that he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. Amen. And even when you are going through something, do not postpone living a happy life. Good. Do not delay your joy. In 1 Thessalonians, it says always be joyful. It doesn't say sometimes. It says all the time. Always keep on praying. No matter what happens, always be thankful. You know who was that Merlin Carruthers used to say, praise God in everything because he's going to make a way of escape? Not for everything because we're not going to praise him for cancer, broken legs, or car accidents, but we're going to praise him in everything because he's going to make a way out, right? Yeah. Joy is the most infallible sign of the presence of God. It is the echo of God's life within you. Enthusiasm is an inside job. There was a little girl who walked to school, to and from school, every single day. And one morning, the weather was questionable and clouds were forming. And she made her uh, daily trek to school. The winds whipped up with lightning in the afternoon as she walked home that day. And her mother sat at home getting worried that the lightning would scare the little girl. She also started to fear that the electric storm might even harm her daughter. So she got in the car and uh, took off to pick her up down the road. She saw the little girl walking down. At each flash of lightning, the child would stop. She would look up and she would smile. And more lightning came on her quickly. Not touching the little girl, but it came on, flashed around her. And when the mother drew up beside the child, she lowered the window and she said, Honey, what are you doing? The child answered, I am trying to look pretty, Mom, because God keeps taking my picture. <laughs> In other words, face the storms that come your way with a smile of hope. Amen? Some people grin and bear it, but other people smile and change it. Good. Be like the Mona Lisa. She keeps smiling when her back is against the wall. If you find yourself dog-tired at night, it may be because you growled all day. Yeah. Learn to laugh at yourself. A person with a great sense of humor may bore others, but she never has a dull moment herself. Humor is to life what shock absorbers are to automobiles. You will rarely succeed at anything unless you have fun doing it. Amen? Good. What do you do when your football team encounters a major victory? Do you get depressed? Do you go into a funk? No, you get up and jump like a madman, cheering at the top of your lungs, right? UNC has a victory. You get up in front of that television uh, 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 set and almost destroy it. When the New England Patriots beat the Seattle Seahawks, must, much to our Westerners' chagrin, in the Super Bowl this year with the amazing catch by Patriot Malcolm Butler, right? It was a shock to all of us Seahawk fans, but it brought overwhelming joy to all you New England Patriot enthusiasts. And I know probably some are in here. But sometimes, as parents, things don't always work out that way that you expected them to. Your kids choose different paths, or they go off the rails altogether. What do you do? Do you get depressed? Do you go into a funk? Probably all of the above. Ruth Graham, wonderful mother of Billy Graham, amen, or no, Franklin Graham, sorry, wife of uh, Billy Graham, uh, her advice to parents of prodigals was this when Franklin was working on his testimony. Number one, <laughs> pray. Number two, don't compromise. Number three, don't nag. Number four, invite them into your home as much as they will come. Because, you know, the light that comes out of you will overpower the darkness that's trying to come at them. So what do you need to do to turn this situation around? Probably the last thing you feel like doing. 
I always uh, like our friend, Pastor Desiree Ayers of, in his presence church there in Woodland Hills. She's a, a, a funny lady. She used to be a stunt woman in Hollywood, and she and her husband uh, started that church there about 20 years ago. But she has a story she always tells about her uh, young teenage son's Walkman. And then when the boy refused to uh, listen to her because he was consumed with these earphones, right, by the device, she just took it and she smashed it into a million pieces. Well, it probably gave her a lot of satisfaction at the time, but it was short-lived when he bought another Walkman. <laughs> you know, um, I had an issue in our family that left me and uh, the enemy in a pity party for about three months. And he was sweeping me clean with depression. I was looking at the issue as an irreconcilable situation. Who could I turn to? What could I do? It was hard enough being a minister, but when you are a minister, you can't talk to the congregation because they kind of put you on a pedestal, amen? And unfortunately, I didn't have a Walkman around to destroy. <laughs> that would have been a quick fix. But finally, after 90 days, I opened the Word of God. You know, God wants to talk to you right here in the B-I-B-L-E. But sometimes we need to dust that thing off and open it up and let it talk to us and hear what he's trying to say. Because he's got advice for you is who are you listening to? And he fired this word like a missile at my heart. Psalms 113, verse 9 in the Amplified Bible, it says, A barren woman shall be a joyful mother of spiritual children. I'm going, joyful? About what? And you might say to me today, if you have children, how many in here today, you have children, you have children or grandchildren, and you have situations, you have issues. I mean, they're never going to be perfect till they get to heaven. <laughs> And you're concerned about where they might be going right now. And, uh, you know, the enemy tries to bring fear against your mind, but you've got to talk back to the enemy. You've got to get sassy like I've been saying to the ladies yesterday and Friday night. You've got to be like Jesus there on the Mount of Temptation. You've got to decree a thing. You've got to declare a thing. And the light of God will shine upon your ways. But it's got to come out of your mouth just like Romans 10, 9, and 10 came out of your mouth when you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus was Lord. You've got to start saying, no, devil, my children will return from the land of the enemy. And me and all my house elves shall be saved. Amen. You've got to hold it up like a banner, a flag at high noon and then watch the enemy retreat. So I'm saying, Lord, what are you talking about? See, I always believe that God talks to you in the Bible through smart bombs. And that's why I wrote that little book. And Keith likes to feature that little book says, look, it's thin. You can finish it. <laughs> But it talks about how the Word of God jumps out at you when you're reading the Bible. And that's God's talking. He's illuminating things to you. He's showing you things. He's trying to talk to you about situations and issues. Is, are you part of a family here? Is it just all, all four of you? Three of you? All right, stand up for the family. Thank you, Jesus. For even in unity, yes, have I brought you even to this place in me. And yes, there is one that is jumping outside of the circle, it's true, but don't let that be of a concern to you. Yes, even as you stay strong, and yes, you continue to pray, and you continue to rejoice in no matter what they might say. Yes, don't let that affect you. Let my word and take it even like a firebrand too. Yes, tattoo it on your heart. Yes, let it make a new start. Yes, even a fresh plank that you can walk out on, don't you see? And yes, some scripture that I'm going to talk to you about, yes, where all of you can agree. And you're going to start to see the victory in a new way. Even from this day, there's going to be better communication and even a new flow too. Thank you, Lord. It's amazing what you can do when you stay in unity. Amen. It says God commands his blessing on unity. He doesn't command it on division, but he does command it on unity. So for me, instead of wallowing in the circumstances and what I could see before my eyes in the natural, because the devil will always make sure that you see, hear everything in the natural very clearly. Instead of going there, I had to take 
the word of God and thank him for the victory. You know what? The battle is the Lord's. The victory belongs to you. He's already won the battle for you. I, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a book by Andrew Womack out and he says, uh, it's, he says, you've already got it. It's got the picture of a greyhound chasing his tail on the front cover. And he says, so why are you trying to get it? <laughs> You've already got it. So why are you trying to get it? Good. Jesus already gave you the victory. So why are you co constantly going after it and, you know, striving for it? All you have to do is get into praise, get into rejoicing. Is this a family right here? Thank you. Okay, stand up. Yes, yes, yes. Hunger, hunger, hunger for more. Yes, you desire to hear it. And yes, you've come and you, I've opened the door. And yes, even more is going to see even the teaching ministry and the people that you want to go to too and the people that you desire to minister to and the Aaron and her anointing upon all of you, the desire to serve, the desire to help, don't you see? Yes, you came from one church. Now I brought you up into a higher level in me and you start to see things that you hadn't seen before. Yes, it be, it's, it's been uh, unique, but it's been refreshing and it's been a uh, place that you knew you were supposed to go to. It was a confirmation to, and in the next three months, there's going to be promotion even for every single one of you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So instead of getting into a funk, I had to change my attitude. You know, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes it's not them, it's us. We've got to change our attitude. We've got to stop being so judgmental. It's the love of God that draws them to repentance. Amen? This situation had nothing to do with my children. They were adults and responsible for their own decisions. But my moping, mournful attitude toward the situation was making the answer stay away from me. If when you worship God, you will start to see a difference in that child because God's doing it, not you, Holy Ghost Junior. Your attitude will change from sorrow and despair to joy and thankfulness for what he's already done. Good. Jeremiah 31, 16 through 17 in the Message Bible. I like the message because it sort of talks good to the, it's clearly to the youth. But God says, stop your incessant weeping. Hold back your tears. Collect wages from your grief work. They will be coming home. Your children will return from the land of the enemy. God has not forgotten your child. Nehemiah 8.10 says the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's the tool in your arsenal that's going to draw them back because you're going to look like you're happy as a Christian. Amen. You're not sad. They're going to be drawn to that. And if you can't get happy, then uh, Keith always says go rent happy feet. And watch those penguins get happy. <laughs> It's your choice to rejoice. Paul and Silas, their break out of that jail was because they praised God at midnight. Amen. You might be in the midnight of your life. You might be in the midnight of your situation right now. And that's the perfect time to raise your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Father, I just worship you right now. I bless your holy name. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that, that you've already won the battle for us. And Lord God, our children are returning from the land of the enemy. Amen. Not only did Paul and Silas get set free, but the jailer and all of his household got saved. There's residuals when you get set free. It's generational. And I felt even as I've been praying and studying for this message for the last month or so, that there's a, a, a definite word, legacy, and who are you handing down your attitude to? What are you doing generationally? It's not just for your children. It's for your grandchildren. It's for your great-grandchildren. There is a path that you are lighting the way with your life in Christ. What are they going to follow? Amen. They want to follow a man or a woman that's full of the joy of the life of God, full of the resurrection power. It's a vital weapon in your spiritual arsenal. Proverbs 3, 5 in the message says, trust God. Even as pastor was saying this morning, but I'm giving you the message translation. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything out on your own, just like when he went to the other story to find his car, amen? And there was that little 79-year-old lady waiting for him. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. My father used to say, honey, always go to the top. When you're in a situation, always go to the top. 
And that's what you have to do to get your family in line with God's word. A 2011 Time Magazine article says there are $30 billion worth of unclaimed money in the United States alone. And I think it should go to people in this church, right? Yeah. How many unclaimed promises are there out there for you and your children that you have not stood on, that you've not put in the enemy's face, that you've not spoken out the word about, right? You got to start talking it out. God has not forgotten your child. When you start to praise him in the middle of this battle, it's like you're enveloped in a supernatural cocoon and God and the enemy cannot take it away from you. Thank you, Jesus. Is this a family here? Yeah. Okay. All right. Stand up. Shika prasika brasho koya brasikriyar. Drika da kaya brasikriyar da koya brasikriyar. Greater, greater, greater. Yes, even doors are open to you too. Yes, even short term missions, trips, and things that you've always wanted to do. And yes, I'll make a way. Don't be concerned about the time or the pay. I'll make it up to you. You see, where there is a vision, I will always uh, create provision, don't you see? So as you walk out on the water, I'll be right there uplifting all of thee. Yes, go with that passion. Go with that fire that I've put in you. Yes, it's not something random. It's something I've always called you to do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you've got uh, 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 fired up missionaries in this church, so we're excited about that and what you uh, did in India was great. You know, God's plans for your child are not annulled because they get a little bit off course. You've just got to stand stronger and develop your prayer life and stand on the truth of his word. Right. Speak it out boldly in your prayer closet to the enemy when he presents you with circumstances. Get back at him. Don't let him talk you down into passivity. Yep. You present him the truth. A lawyer proves his case by citing previous cases. The Holy Spirit is your advocate who can only use the word that you give to him. So let him have something to work with instead of just judging and criticizing and complaining and agreeing with the enemy about the situation. In 2 Chronicles 20, 22, it says King Jehoshaphat deliberately placed the praisers in the very front of the army where they would be most vulnerable to enemy attack. But the very fact that those praisers lifted up their voice in the middle of that battle, they were, not, uh, they were not afraid of what was coming at them because they knew God was on their side. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you today, the Lord is on your side. God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Amen. And they began to sing. They began to praise. And even as they did that, even as you start to worship God, sometimes I go into my closet, prayer closet or I go into the restroom across the hall from my office and I start to raise my hands and I start to worship God. I start to praise God. I start to count on Him. I, get, I cast the care on Him. I release the weight to Him. And even as I do, things get straightened out. Amen? Amen. In the Spirit. So the Lord set ambushments as they began to praise against these enemies, the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. You know, they'd come against Judah. What is that the name for? Praise. That was a mistake right there. I mean, their eyes must have been totally blinded to come against the tribe of praise. And they were self-slaughtered. In other words, when the soldiers on the front lines started to praise, God turned their enemies on each other instead of upon the children of Israel. Amen. Instead of on the tribe of Judah. Praise is an offensive weapon, ladies and gentlemen, not just something you do at the end of your prayers. It's actually one of the most effective tools, like I said, in your prayer arsenal. Rejoicing before the Lord is actually building up strength in you. It's actually uh, like, you know, it says Jude 20, you're building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You build yourself up also when you start to praise the Lord. And if you're having a hard time praising God and what you're going through, ask him, what is stealing my joy? What are you allowing to upset you? Even unsaved and renegade children can be a distraction from God's destiny in your life. You have to enter into that rest and believe God has them tattooed in the palm of his hands. 
I remember uh, uh, I was with Katie a, a, a few weeks ago, and um, it was sort of interesting because she wants to buy this nunnery on top of a mountain in Los Angeles, uh, 10 acres, and it, uh, you know, has belonged to these uh, Catholic nuns and priests, and she's had to, for the last year, move the priests out and to another location so it would be available for her to buy. And um, the Catholic Church was not really sure about selling a nunnery to a rock star. <laughs> they were not sure how the publicity was going to go through this, but it went to the Vatican, and the Vatican said it was okay, and it went back down to the Monsignor of Southern California, and he said, well, the Vatican says it's okay, then it must be okay. But there was this one rogue nun, and she was standing in the way for her getting this uh, uh, property. And so Katie had to go and sit in front of these uh, four nuns and these three lawyers and the management and the Ron Senior and all these people in a long boardroom, long faces. But you know, she, she did really well. And uh, the moment she hold, held up her wrist, on her wrist is tattooed the name of Jesus. It started to turn the battle in her phase, favor. She held up her wrist and there it was. She said, you know, I still have this on my wrist. I still have the name of Jesus tattooed on my wrist, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm doing. And some things obviously I don't agree with and neither does my husband agree with, but Jesus is always there talking to her in that name, amen. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I think when she got it done, she said, Mom, you know, it's actually across an artery there. If, if uh, you know, I, I, if I tried to get that off, uh, I, I could potentially bleed to death. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> so if you have a hard time praising God and what you're going through, ask him what's stealing your joy. You don't have to let anyone have power over you emotionally. Amen. A friend of mine once preached a great message on, quote, what is holding your happy hostage? After all, strife is not going to improve your relationship and your family. God does not bless division. He blesses unity. He commands his blessing on unity, as a matter of fact. You find your peace and his peace in the middle of the storm, and you stay there. The battle is the Lord's, like I said, but the victory belongs to you. The most important thing, no matter what is happening, keep your lines of communication open between you and your children. No matter what they're doing, if they're doing drugs, if they're in jail, if they're sleeping around, whatever is going on, you don't let that stop them. That's just a circumstance, amen? God's word is higher than the circumstance and your presence and your influence will make a difference in your life if you get out there and allow it to. But your judgment and your criticism say, I'm never gonna speak to them again. Well, where are they going? They're gonna find somebody who's gonna speak to them. It may not be the right person you want speaking to them, amen? Let his word umpire your thought life and especially what you say, the byproducts of your thoughts. Sometimes you just got to take authority over depression. Your sad and depressed attitude may be the very reason your kids don't want to come around you. Yeah. Bind it up, change the channel, and watch Happy Feet, like I said. Depression and anger will freeze you up and stop you in your tracks. But it says in Habakkuk, keep moving on your high places of trouble, suffering, responsibility. Don't stand still in terror. Fear will freeze you. It'll stop you from your destiny. Yeah. Webster defines depression as sadness, inactivity, difficulty in thinking or concentration, a significant increase or decrease in appetite. Now, if it's increased, that's one big reason to get happy, right? Yes. We don't want any of that depression that makes us want to eat. Depression is also set, uh, uh, defined as time spent in sleeping. I remember when I was 19 years old, I didn't get saved till I was about 29. And um, I was going to Berserkley, University of California at Berkeley. And unfortunately, I had an abortion. And it was, you know, people said, well, there's something wrong with the abortion. It's just like a little operation, da, da, da. it's not gonna affect you. Oh, right. After I had that abortion, I was so depressed. I was not even a believer. I didn't even know the Lord Jesus Christ. But I was so depressed, I would take my morning classes from 10 until 1. I'd go back to sleep at 2, and I'd sleep the rest of the day until 9 o'clock the next morning. I was that under it because of that abortion. And I didn't even know that I had been, you know, what I had been doing, that I had been killing a life. 
But thank God that the uh, uh, pro-life people are starting to get a voice now and people are starting to listen to them and even scientists starting to realize that babies feel pain and uh, laws are being passed and things are being changed, ladies and gentlemen, because you're speaking out and you're not letting that uh, go on, that spirit of murder. So your spirit's like an antenna. It's alive to God when it's turned in the right direction. Amen? Sometimes we have to turn those antennas. It will respond to his spirit or to another spirit, depending upon what station you are tuned into. You know, we have a friend, uh, Mark Hankins. Uh, is a minister in Louisiana, and he had an amazing mother. But it, she wasn't always amazing. She had a situation when he was uh, a very young boy, he had three older brothers, I think, and uh, I think when he was three years old, he got his thumb caught in a bicycle chain and it was cut off. And she felt so guilty about that, she had a nervous breakdown and stayed inside of her bedroom for over a year, just being depressed. And finally, her husband, who could not manage these four wild and crazy boy, young boys, uh, went in there with the Word of God and the little book In Him by Kenneth E. Hagan yep. and started to tell her who she was in Christ. And her spirit started to rise up on the inside. And the greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You don't have to succumb to depression. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's, it's God Christ in you, the hope of glory. Help yourself. And things like that, words like that would start to lift her up and build her up until finally she got so excited. She started coming back to church. She got out of her bedroom. She started going down, sitting on the front row. And uh, she, when her husband started to preach, she would run around the sanctuary. And, uh, you know, she started doing this. And uh, by that time, Mark was a uh, young teenager, about 13 years old. And sometimes he'd bring his friends to church and they'd sit in the back row. And uh, they'd see this woman, this wild woman, running around the sanctuary. They'd say, who is this crazy lady? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> it was his mother because she was full of the joy of the Lord. Amen? Her attitude had changed because she had gotten the word into her. That's Instead good. of letting that depression take over her, right. she got the word of God in her. Yeah. Amen? Good, thank man. you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you today. Father, we bless you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Is this, are you, are you two together? Can you stand up? Shika pra sika om pra shika sika dia pra shika dia. Si pra sundo o shika dia pra shika dia pra shika dia. Oh, lighter, 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 easier, easier, easier. It's too. Yes, even these thoughts that have tried to overtake you and the situations you face, even though that uh, you are a, a stable uh, uh, and you are secure in me, there are things that uh, shots the enemy would try to fire at you like darts. Don't you see things that would try to take you down even foul balls that you didn't even see but don't let that stop you from the momentum that I've already given thee yes it's a new day I have a new way just rest in me don't let this uh, thing that happened last week try to uh, take you off course don't you see no it's going to come a steadying there's going to come a new flow even in the next days it'll next 10 days it's going to start to eat even out and yes you'll be glad that you listen to my spirit and Instead of letting this uh, thing affect you and uh, you, the words that they say, you won't even hear it. Thank you, Lord. Are there any parents in here today with it? We uh, need to be quick this morning, but are there any parents in here today and you're really going through something? If you want to come up real quickly, uh, we want to agree with you because we're going to, you know, we have to end the service. So we want you to come up. There's anybody in here as a parent, a uh, father or mother, and you've got issues and you'd like to see your attitude change. You'd like to see your situation change and you just want to give it to God. You want to release the weight of it. You want to cast the care of it. Now, this is not uh, something that, you know, you're not it necessarily uh, to do with your children. It's to do with your attitude. And that's where uh, God really ministered to me that a barren woman needed to be a joyful mother of spiritual children. I had to change my attitude. And when my attitude started to change, my parenting has changed. Because it's not up to me to what these children do. It's up to God. And he's already won the battle. Amen. So just raise your hands and we have some music. It will be wonderful. And just say this after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I am going to cast the care of the situation and this child on the Lord today. 
Father, I know that you are faithful. And Lord, I thank you that you would just download a spirit of joy into my heart this morning. And Father, you're going to give me new vision. Open up the eyes of my heart. Show me what I should see. Show me what I should say. And show me what I should not say. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I was praying today. I just saw that uh, people that came up here this morning, it just seems like, you know, uh, uh, you've just made a commitment to stand here and you're standing for the sake of uh, your children. This is going to be a a turnaround day. This is going to be a turnaround. You're going to start to see things change. It's not up to, uh, it's not up to the children. It's up to you. It's up to you, right? Amen. 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 All right. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.